Hello friends and welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in Computer Science, we will be discussing about the concept of Introduction to Data Communication and Computer Networks. In the first session of the lecture, we will be discussing data com communication and its components, modes of communications and networks and networks topology. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subjects by Dr. Pavitra Bharadwaj. Dr. Bharadwaj is assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science in Jason Mary College, University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Ma'am to our studios and request her to start the lecture. Welcome Ma'am. Hello everybody. Today we will be talking about the topic of data communication and computer networks. This is a very interesting and common topic in computer science, but the level of this lecture will be focused more for undergraduate level students of non-technical courses. Now what do we mean by communication? Communication basically refers to the exchange of information and ideas. This exchange could be based on verbal communication, written communication or communication through computers. Therefore, data communication will refer to the exchange of data or information from one entity to the other entity. When we talk about data communication and communication over computer networks, we also commonly know about a topic, hear about a concept of telecommunication. So telecommunication is also a type of communication which uses the telephonic technology or any kind of electronic medium for the exchange of information. So in this lecture, we will be talking about what is data communication? What are the different components of a communication system? Then we will talk about networks. What are computer networks? How the networks are classified? And what are the physical arrangements of computers in the networks known as topologies? We will also be talking about different modes of data communication which support the transfer of data in different formats and different ways from one entity to the other entity. So dear friends, let us start with our lecture. So the term telecommunication means communication at a distance. That is two entities who are not close by, who cannot communicate through verbal ways, use telecommunication methods to communicate to each other. Now the word data refers to information presented in whatever form is agreed upon by the parties creating and using the data. Data communication is the exchange of data between two devices via some form of transmission medium such as a wire, a cable or wireless medium like Wi-Fi or infrared or radio waves. So here we would like to talk importantly mention that the data that is being communicated could be in any form. It could be text, it could be voice, it could be images, it could be videos. Any kind of data can be transmitted through a data communication channel between two devices. Now this slide shows the five different components of a communication system. As you can see in this diagram, we have a sender of the information, we have a receiver of the information, the red line joining the sender and the receiver is the medium, what is being passed through the, through the medium from the sender to the receiver 
is the message and we also see some rules or protocols which are governing the data communication network. Now in order to simplify this concept, we can take the example of a classroom. So in a classroom, a teacher is giving a lecture to the students. If the lecture is using only oral method or only the voice of the teacher, then the teacher is the sender. The students who are receiving the information become the receiver. The content or the subject which is being delivered becomes the message. And because it is an oral lecture or may be written, so the medium becomes either medium of communication is either sound or maybe also visual methods like light. Now with pro by protocol we mean the rules that are governing the communication and both the sender and the receiver must agree on the same set of rules. For instance, if the teacher is teaching in Japanese, the students must also understand the language that is Japanese. If the students do not understand the language that the teacher is speaking in, they cannot communicate. So the point here is that protocols are the set of rules by which both the sender and the receiver of the information must agree, must understand and must obey for a successful communication to take place between any two entities. This communication system is applicable to both types of communication whether using computers or without the use of computers. So we will see the definition of each of these parts. Now message is actually the information or data which is communicated. So this message could be text, numbers, pictures, audio, video etc. Sender is the device that sends the message. It can again be a computer, telephone handset, video camera etc. Receiver is the device which receives the message. Again it could be any of those like a computer, telephone etc. Protocol as I just said is the set of rules that governs data communication. It is represented as an agreement between the communicating devices. Without it two devices cannot be, they can be connected but they cannot communicate. And transmission medium is the physical path by which the message travels from the sender to the receiver. So we know that the transmission medium could be many different types of mediums are there through which data can be transmitted. Now we come to the different types of data and their representation on computer networks. So the first type of data is the text data. Now text is represented as a bit pattern, a sequence of zeros and ones. Different sets of bit patterns have been designed to represent text symbols. The each set is called a code and the process of representing these symbols is called a coding scheme. So the prevalent coding system is the Unicode coding system which uses 32 bits to represent a symbol or a character used in any language of the world. The ASCII codes or the American Standard Code for Information Interchange constitutes the first 127 characters in the Unicode and is also referred to as the basic Latin. So after text, the second type of commonly used data is the numbers. Now numbers we all understand that numbers are not represented using any kind of coding scheme but they can directly be converted into binary form. There are algorithms which convert any number into its equivalent binary number and this number can then be transmitted over the network. The next type of data is images. Images are again represented in the form of bits and bitmaps. These are known as bit patterns. In its simplest form, an image is composed of a matrix of pixels. Pixels are actually picture elements. 
where each pixel is a small dot. The size of the pixel depends on the resolution. An image can be divided into 1000 pixels or 10,000 pixels. So the more the number of pixels, the better is the quality of the image. But again, more memory is required to store the same image. So each image is then converted into a pattern of into a combination of these pixels and this combination and pattern of pixels is known as the bitmap. So the images are referred and stored and transmitted in the form of series of bits known as the bitmap patterns. Along with this the pixel images are also uh, the color information of the image is also stored in the pixel in the form of red, green and blue. So each pixel represents a red, a green and a blue slot on it which represents the color. Along with RGB we also have cyan, yellow, cyan and magenta. So these are again the three primary colors. So all put all this put together will represent the image on the network. Now we come to data flow or modes of communication between types of data flow between a sender and a receiver. Now this diagram shows three different types of data flow. The first is the simplex. In simplex as you can see there is unidirectional flow of data. In half duplex, the data flows in both directions, but the times are different. That is, the data flows from one station to the other at time 1 and at time 2, it flows from the second station to the first station. And in the third, that is full duplex, data can flow in both the directions at any given point of time. So now we are going to discuss each of these modes of communication that is simplex, half duplex and full duplex. Now simplex communication is the simplest type of communication which refers to unidirectional flow of information. That is only one of the two devices on a link can transmit, the other can only receive. Examples of Simplex communication are keyboards and traditional monitors. That is keyboard can only introduce input, the monitor can only accept the output. So simplex mode can use the entire capacity of the channel to send data in one direction. So basically in simplex mode of communication, the data will only flow in one direction all the time. The other the flow in the opposite direction is not possible. Another common example of simplex communication in our daily lives is the radio. In case of a radio, a radio set can only receive the signals and it cannot use the same channel to send the signals back to the radio station. So this unidirectional communication is known as simplex communication. The next type of communication is known as half duplex communication. In case of half duplex communication, as we had seen in the diagram, the data flows in both the directions, but at any given point of time, data will flow only in a specific direction. This is commonly seen in case of wireless walkie talkie sets. At any given time, the communication channel can be utilized by any one of the communicating entities. Once this has been released, only then the authority or the control of the communication channel will go to the next or the second entity. So, in half duplex, each station can both be a sender and the receiver but not at the same time. When one device is sending, the other can only receive and vice versa. The entire capacity of the channel is taken over by whichever of the two devices is transmitting at the time. Walkie talkies and citizen band radios are both half duplex systems. 
The next is full duplex. It is called duplex also because both stations can transmit and receive simultaneously. Signals going in one direction share the capacity of the link with the signals going in the opposite direction. This sharing can occur in two ways. Either the link must contain two physically separate transmission paths, one for the sending and other for receiving or the capacity of the channel is divided between signals travelling in both directions. Example of this is the telephone network. Full duplex mode is used when communication in both directions is required all the time. So out of the three, full duplex communication is the most widely used communication in case of computer communication because all machines can act as the transmitter as well as the receiver of information at any given time. We will see how the data medium or the transmission medium can be shared or can be partitioned between the two entities at given intervals of time when they are acting as a sender or as a receiver respectively. Now we will talk about the topic of networks. So what is a network basically? A network represents an interconnection of entities. If we say a network of roads or a network of railways or a network of telephones or mobile phones, we actually mean that you are interconnecting different places through the roads or through the railways or you are interconnecting different devices with the, with the telephone network or with the telephone lines etc. So a network is basically a set of devices connected by communication links. A node can be a computer, printer or any other device capable of sending and or receiving data generated by other nodes on the network. So basically a node could be either a computer or it could also be a device. Any entity which is connected on the, network, on the network with other entities is said to be a node. So a node can either receive information or can send information or it can be both a receiver as well as a sender of information to the other nodes connected on the network. Now we also hear about a common topic called distributed processing. Now computer networks have become very important since the concept of distributed processing has come up. In case of distributed processing what happens is that instead of all programs and data being stored at the same computer on a single large machine, separate computers or a personal computer workstations handle a subset of the complete process. That is a task is divided among multiple computers. All these computers are interconnected to each other with the help of communication computer networks. So distributed processing has changed the way data and information is handled by computers. It has not just increased the speed of communication and data processing but has also drastically changed the reliability of data exchange and data processing. Besides this, there are several uses or several advantages or applications of using computer networks. So applications of computer networks, the most important reason why computer networks are used is resource sharing. We have commonly seen in all institutions that printers and some expensive scanners etc. they are installed at one place and all the computers are connected to the same printer or the same scanner machine. So this is a concept called resource sharing. So besides hardware resources, softwares can also be shared on networks. Files can also be shared on networks. So basically it is a client server architecture which is created where one computer becomes the storage area 
and all other computers are connected to this one computer and they then exchange, they send requests to this computer for all kinds of files or softwares and they receive the response from this. So basically a number of computers can share expensive resources or critical resources by using a computer network, by connecting the different computers to each other. So besides resource sharing, an important application of computer network is information sharing. We have all seen how the www or the world wide web has changed the scenario of searching information over the computers. Easy accessibility is provided by computer networks. You can access all files and data from any place in the world. The next application of computer networks is communication. We all understand how email and message broadcasting have changed the communication systems of today. Next is remote computing. Remote computing means that you can connect to a computer through a network and you can use it through different protocols like FTP or Telnet to access those computers as if you are accessing a computer which is lying in front of you. You can not just download and upload information and files to these computers, but you can actually access and process your data on a computer which is located remotely. So remote computing is one of the very important points and applications of computer networks. Besides remote processing, distributed processing has also been a very important advantage of using computer network. As I just said, distributing processing means that you are dividing the data and the information storage and processing over a multitude of computers and then this information can be distributed and can be stored at one place or it could be stored at multiple computers. Therefore, we see that data communication and computer networks are two concepts which are very closely intertwined with each other. Now we will see a few criteria for assessing the performance or assessing the quality of computer networks. So the first criteria which is used for assessing the quality or the significance of a computer network is its performance. Performance can be measured in several ways. For example, transit time. It is the amount of time required for a message to travel from one device to another. Response time is the elapsed time between an inquiry and a response. The number of users that are connected to a computer, the type of transmission medium which it uses, the capabilities of connected hardware, efficiency of the software, throughput and delay. All these aspects are used for measuring the performance of a computer network. The next criteria to assess the quality of a network is reliability. In addition to accuracy of delivery, network reliability is measured by the frequency of failure, the time it takes to link, takes a link to recover from a failure and the network's robustness in case of a failure, in case of an emergency. The third criteria for a network's assessment is security, whether the network is protecting data from unauthorized access. It is protecting the data from damage and development, implementing policies and procedures for recovery from breaches and data losses. So now we come to the physical structure of the computer networks. In case of physical structure of network, we will talk about two things. One is the types of connections and second is the physical topology, the physical arrangement of computers or nodes on a network. So types of connections, 
we will be talking about two types of connections, um, connections amongst computers on a network. The first type of commu commu computer connection will be a peer to peer network and the second type will be a client server network. In case of a peer to peer network, we will see that the computers which are attached to each other or which are talking to each other, they are similar in hardware as well as software. All computers have same capabilities and they are connected for the purpose of communication and information interchange. In case of client server architecture, we will see that the computers which are connected have different kind of hardware and software configuration and one computer is more powerful than the rest of the computers. Therefore, the other computers will send requests for services to this particular computer and this computer will process the request and send back the response to the requesting computers which are commonly called as clients. So now let us look at this topic in detail. Types of connection. Connection is basically a link is a communication pathway that transfers data from device to another. Two, type, two devices must be connected in the same way to the same link at the same time. So two types of connections are point to point and multi point network. So a point to point connection provides a dedicated link between two devices. The entire capacity of the communication medium is divided among the individual network points. The most point to point connections use an actual length of wire or cable to connect the two ends but other options such as microwave or satellite links are also possible. When you change television channels by infrared remote control, you are establishing a point to point connection between the remote control and the television's control system. Then we have multi-point network. In a multi-point network which is also called as a multi-drop network or multi-drop connection, one in which more than two specific devices share a single link. In a multi-point environment, the capacity of the channel is shared either spatially or temporally. If several devices can use the link simultaneously, it is spatially shared connection. If users must take turns, it is called a time shared connection. Dear friends, so far in this lecture on data communication <coughs> and computer networks, we have done data communication and its components and modes of communication in networks and network topology. Now we are going to take a break and after the break we will be resuming with the lecture. Thank you for watching.
Hello friends and welcome to CEC live lectures. Dear friends, today in lecture on computer science in data communication and computer networks, we are continuing with the previous topic of network topology. Along with that, we will be discussing categories of networks. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subjects by Dr. Pavitra Bharadwaj and it's welcome Dr. Bharadwaj and ask her to resume the lecture. Welcome ma'am. So, we will now be talking about the second component of the computer networks that is physical topology. The term physical topology refers basically to the physical connections or the net the way the network is lay out, laid out in the physical sense or in the physical environment. How individual computers or nodes are connected to each other. Two or more devices connect to a link to more links form a topology. The topology of a network is the geometric representation of the relationships of all the links and linking devices to one another. So basically how they are actually laid out in the physical sense, what is the geometrical arrangement of computers in the networks will refer to the network physical topology. So, in this we will be studying about four different types of arrangements of computers, the mesh, the star, the bus and the ring topology. Besides this we will also be looking at the double, the extended star topology which is also called as the tree topology. So, the first type of topology that we are going to look at is the mesh topology. As you can see in the mesh topology, each node or each computer, each device is connected to every other device on the network. So, if there are n machines on the network, then you will have a large number of connections between them. So, uh, each device has a dedicated point to point link to every other device means that the link carries traffic only between two devices it connects. To find the number of links in a fully connected mesh network with n nodes, first consider that each node must be connected to every other node. That is node 1 must be connected to n minus 1 nodes, node 2 will also be connected to n minus 1 nodes and so on. Therefore, we need n into n minus 1 physical links. However, if each physical link allows communication in both directions that is a duplex mode, we can divide the number of links by 2. So, in other words, we can say that in a mesh topology, we need n into n minus 1 upon 2 duplex mode links. Every device on the network must have n minus 1 input output ports to be connected to other n minus 1 stations. Now, what are the advantages of using a mesh topology? The use of dedicated links guarantees that each connection can carry its own data load, thus eliminating the traffic problems that can occur when links must be shared by multiple devices. This is the robust topologies because if one link becomes unusable, then it does not incapacitate the entire system. Privacy and security is another major advantage because when every message travels along a dedicated line, only the intended recipient will see it. Physical boundaries prevent other users from gaining access to the messages. It makes fault identification and fault isolation very easy and traffic can be routed to avoid links with suspected problems. But there is some problems also. These are first is that the amount of cabling and the number of IO ports required is very high in case of mesh topology. Every device must be connected to every other device. Therefore, installation and reconnection become very difficult. 
the shear bulk of the wiring can be greater than the available space and the hardware required to connect each link can be expensive. So, one practical example of mesh topology is the connection of telephone regional offices in which each regional office needs to be connected to every other regional office. So, once again we reiterate in mesh topology every device is connected to every other device thus making the bulk of wiring very heavy. It is a very foolproof method which is fault tolerant, secure but at the same time it is very expensive. The next topology that we discuss as can be seen in the diagram also is the star topology. In case of the star topology we can see that all nodes are connected to one common device like the hub and all nodes which are communicating to each other will send the information to the hub and the information will be transmitted to the recipient device through the hub. There is no direct connection as you can see there is no direct connection amongst the different communicating devices. So, in case of a star topology there is an additional networking physical component which is added a networking device which needs to be added which is called a hub. So, a hub is actually a multi port device which connects the different computers. So, each device has a dedicated point to point link to a central controller usually a hub. Unlike a mesh a star does not allow direct traffic between devices the controller actually acts as an exchanger. Now, a star topology is less expensive than a mesh topology. Each device needs only one link and one IO port to connect to any other devices. This factor also makes it easy to install and configure and far less cabling is required. Additions move-ons and deletions involve only one connection between that device and the hub. If one link fails only that link is affected all other links will remain active. This factor also lends itself to easy fault identification and isolation. As long as the hub is working it can be used to monitor link problems and bypass defective links. Now, one important major disadvantage of the star topology is its dependence on the hub. As we said that if any of the devices fails, you can easily use the hub to detect the fault and isolate the problematic device or the node. But what would happen in case the hub itself fails? If the hub fails, the entire network will come down. Therefore, this heavy dependency on a single device makes this type of topology very very vulnerable. Also, the hub is an expensive device and it increases the cost overall cost of the network because you have to put an additional device. Also, the installation will require some kind of expertise because the hub has to be maintained. So, it is generally used in high speed LAN connections in local area networks like for example, computers which are connected within a building or within a room or within a small campus which is a few kilometers in area. Otherwise, star topology may not be a very reliable way of connecting computers. So, we have discussed the two topologies that is mesh and star. The next topology that we discuss is an extended star which is also called as a tree topology. Now, the extended star topology actually connects multiple devices through a single backbone. Larger networks use the extended star topology also called the tree topology. When used with network devices that filter frames or packets like bridges, switches and routers, this topology 
significantly reduces the traffic on the wires by sending packets only to the wires of the destination host. So, a tree topology can be said to be a smarter star topology because the devices which are used here they have some sort of programming element built in them that is they can be used for packet filtering and sending the packet to the destined host only and not to any other computer or node on the network. The next topology that we discuss is the bus topology. The bus is one of the simplest kinds of topology as you can see in the diagram it is a multi point topology one long cable acts as a backbone to link all the devices in a network. You can see here that there is a single cable and the different connections or the different machines are connected to it through a drop line and a tap. So, a single cable is used. This topology is the simplest kind of topology which is the easiest to install and the lowest cost and the most cost friendly topology of computer network. So, a drop line is a connection running between the device and the main cable. A tap is a connector that either splices into the main cable or punctures the sheathing of a cable to create a contact with the metallic core. So, basically a drop line will connect to the tap and the tap will connect the drop line to the connector to the main line. As a signal travels along the backbone, some of its energy is transformed into heat. Therefore, it becomes weaker and weaker as it travels farther and farther. For this reason, there is a limit on the number of taps a bus can support and on the distance between those taps. Now, the advantages of using a bus topology as I just said is first ease of installation because you just have to get the tap and you have to get a line drop and you can connect to the network. Although the limitation is on the number of taps which can be connected due to the effect of heating and weakening of signals over the bus. The backbone cable here can be laid along the most efficient path then connected to the nodes by drop lines of various lengths. In this way a bus uses less cabling than mesh or star topologies. In a star for example, four network devices in the same room require four lengths of cable reaching all the way to the hub. In a bus this redundancy is eliminated only the backbone cable stretches through the entire facility. Each drop line has to reach only as far as the nearest point on the backbone. Now, the disadvantages of using a bus topology. First is there is difficulty in reconnection and fault isolation. A bus is usually designed to be optimally efficient at installation. It can therefore be difficult to add new devices. Signal reflection at the taps can cause degradation in quality. This degradation can be controlled by limiting the number and spacing of devices connected to a given length of cable. Then adding new devices may therefore require modification or replacement of the backbone. In addition, a fault or break in the bus cable stops all transmission even between devices on the same side of the problem. The damaged area reflects signals back in the direction of origin creating noise in both the directions. So, basically a bus topology is used in case of Ethernet LANs which are simple architecture and short distances generally used in case of small computer labs where students are tra for training and learning purposes. The speed of the LAN Ethernet is fast therefore, this is a popular top topology which is employed in 
case of computer communication. But again the backbone that is the bus becomes a vulnerable point of the network. The next topology that we are going to discuss is a ring topology. Now basically what is a ring topology? A ring topology as you can see in the diagram, it is a bus topology but instead of the bus being closed at both the ends, it is joined at the two ends thus forming a circle or thus forming a ring of stations. Now in this case as you can see each device is having a repeater installed at the point where we had a tap in case of a bus topology. A repeater is basically a device which is used to amplify the signal which is received by the station. As we had seen in case of bus topology, we saw that due to the heating effect, the signals got weakened. Therefore, in order to avoid this weakening of signals at the point of inception between the drop line and the main cable at the tap, we will install a repeater so that the signals can be maintained throughout their transmission on the cable or on the backbone. So, in a ring topology, each device has a dedicated point to point connection with only two devices on either side of it. A signal is passed along the ring in one direction from device to device until it reaches its destination. Each device in the ring incorporates a repeater. When a device receives a signal intended for other device, its repeater regenerates the bits and passes them along. Now the advantages of using a ring topology, basically it is easy to install and configure because as I just said, it is one of the variations in the bus topology. In case of bus topology also, besides the end computers, the terminal computers, all other computers, they are connected to two of their neighbors. Here also, in this case, all the computers on the network are connected to two of the other nodes on the network. So, a ring is a simple method of connecting, interconnecting computer. It is easy to configure, easy to maintain and easy to find out the problems in the network. Each device is linked only to its immediate two neighbors. To add or delete a device, you actually need to only work on a changing only the two connection. Fault isolation is also simplified. Generally in a ring, a signal is circulating at all times. If one device does not receive a signal within a specified period, it can issue an alarm. The alarm alerts the network operator to the problem and its location. Now the disadvantages of the ring topology are the only constraints are media and traffic consideration. That is the maximum ring length and the maximum number of devices that can be connected in a ring is limited. Unidirectional traffic can be a disadvantage. In a simple ring, a break in the ring just as a disabled station can disable the entire network. This weakness can be solved by using a dual ring or a switch capable of closing of the break. That is even if a particular node or a particular station on the ring becomes non-functional, even then because there is a double ring, so the other connection will come up and it will make the network more fault tolerant and the connections will still keep working even if one node stops transmitting information to its neighboring nodes. So ring topology is used again in case of token ring networks, in case of local area networks, etc. Then besides this, besides these four, five types of topologies, the most commonly employed topology is a hybrid topology. Hybrid topology means that a combination of different topologies will be employed to create a network. 
because we have seen that each of these topologies they have their own advantages and disadvantages. Thus, in order to create a fault tolerant, cost effective, efficient network, none of these topologies would be sufficient as indiv individually. Therefore, for this they will what we need to use is a combinational approach where different topologies are used as per need. So, this topologies is known as a hybrid topology. As you can see in this diagram, the main star topology with each branch connecting several stations in a bus topology. So, there is a star topology and there is a bus topology. Now, we will start with the categories of networks. This is a very important and very commonly talked about topic. So, we see that there are three different categories of networks. These categories are basically based on the size of the networks and the distance that each network covers. So, the first type of network is a local area network, the second is a wide area network and the third is called as a metropolitan area network. So, first we will talk about the local area network or a LAN. So, basically a local area network is spans about few kilometers, but generally it is restricted to either one room, one building or a small campus or premises. Now, it is basically used for resource sharing between adjacent nodes like for example, the accounts server, the file server in the accounts office can be used by all the 5, 6 different computers to share the accounting files in a office, in a small office. It is generally used in case in, in the form of a client server architecture. It uses transmission media which is generally wires and it uses simple topologies like star, ring and bus topologies. So, this is a short range computer network which has got the maximum speed. LAN, LAN networks they offer maximum speed and also reliability and security because there is no interaction with any kind of external computer. Therefore, the information on a LAN is very very secure. So, its size is actually restricted by the number of licenses. Because generally when you have a local area network, you have a network operating system. So, in that case you have a specific number of users which can connect to a given particular op uh, software or operating system or any other customized software. So, the number of users that can be connected on the LAN at a given point is determined, sometimes determined by the conditions of the license. The second type of network that we are going to talk about is the wide area network. Now, the wide area network is the large network which can be used to connect computers across cities, across states, countries, continents or even the whole world. Now, the technology, the network medium, transmission medium which is used in case of a wireless uh, of a a uh, wide area network can be as varied because you have computers connected which are heterogeneous computers of course connected throughout the van. So, you have different types of combinations of technologies which are connect uh, with uh, transmission media which are connecting computers like wired media, wireless, satellite, radio frequency, infrared etcetera. Again the topology of the wireless area network, wide area network is a mixture or a hybrid topology. The internet is the common example of a wide area network. The, the next type of network that we are going to talk about is a metropolitan area network. The metropolitan area network is actually in between the local area network and a wide area network. It is uh, designed for high speed internet connectivity telephone lines, cable TV network etcetera are examples of metropolitan area network. So, dear friends in this session we have discussed an introduction about data communication and computer networks. 
we have seen how different computers can be interconnected to each other using different topologies. Thank you. Dear friends, in this lecture we have attempted to understand various aspects of computers and networks. On that note, we would like to thank Dr. Pavitra Bharadwaj for coming here and delivering this wonderful lecture. And thank you dear friends for watching our lecture. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.